everyone, I hope you're doing well. As of late, I've been trying to create a build that uses the Heavy Stubber as a main weapon, and with the last update actually buffing the Ackleys, I found that this might be the best time. I managed to find a really enjoyable loadout that finally uses Point Blank Barrage the way I believe it's meant to be used. This build outputs a ton of damage while supporting your allies in the heat of battle. And honestly, in my opinion, Ogren is in one of the best spots regarding build synergy and survivability. This build was an experiment at first, but once I got used to the Heavy Stubber's power climb with Point Blank Barrage, there was no looking back. Alright, enough chit chat, let's start with the loadout. To take care of any of the horde, I chose to use the Mark III B-Bully Club. This weapon has so much potential besides horde clearing since you can also stagger bosses and specials with your special action, the slap. With my main focus to use this weapon for horde clearing, I went with damage to maniacs and flak armor enemies. Having to take out these guys normally will be a hassle, but with our blessings it'll be quite easy. Since we want to focus on survivability, we want to have confidence strike for the toughness regen on chained hits. And while we're swinging to easily kill the horde, I'm also using Haymaker. This blessing is great because it will stack up to 5 times while you're chaining your heavies, and once you reach 5 stacks, you'll have a 20% chance to instantly kill any human sized enemies. This means ragers, maulers, and gunners all have a chance to die very quickly to your club, and if they don't die from that, you can still stagger them on hit. Regardless though, the club will be mostly used on horde clearing or occasionally push into a close range special when you can. As for our heavy stubber, that will be our main weapon of this build. Now I went with the Ackley Stubber since the newest patch buffed the weapon, making it even better than it was before. I like this Stubber for the fast rate of fire, faster brace stance, and now even faster reload animation. The Ackley's also has a ton of ammo, which is great for us whenever packs of elites or specialists start pushing in with the Horde. Since I wanted to do more damage to monstrosities, I went with damage to unyielding enemies, which also covers us for Reapers, but I also opted in for damage to Carapace armored enemies. And I know that might seem weird to have damage to armored enemies, but you'll see why we have it later on. As for my blessings, I went with Blaze Wave for the increased power with continuous gunfire, and overwhelming fire, which is also great for unloading into the horde, since we are going to be gaining more power through shooting multiple enemies. Our main job with this weapon is to focus elites and ranged specials. Since the Achilles has much better targeting with this latest patch, your shots will be grouped up and more consistent. With all that out of the way though, let's talk about the curios for a second. So I experimented with lots of different curios to see what fits better, and honestly, this is what I would recommend bringing. Have at least two toughness curios and possibly a wound if you're worried about going down, otherwise stack toughness and a max health. For all three though, you want toughness regen speed and boost the health and toughness. I always recommend going in for yourself and trying out what you find better. Curios are a bit of a touchy subject, since lots of people have different preferences, playstyles, and opinions on what is better. So you do you, this is only my recommendation. Now let's talk about the talent tree for a second and how this class will allow you to become a brute force with a whole lot of daka. So for our main ability, I really wanted to make a build around point blank barrage. This ability is awesome as it will quick swap to your stubber when activated and it auto reloads your clip immediately. Not only that, but you gain more rate of fire and you gain a faster reload speed for 10 seconds. This has a very lengthy cooldown window of 80 seconds, but you can also lower this quite easily with one of our keystone abilities. As for our ability modifiers, I wanted Bullet Bravado for the toughness replenishment since we're going to be mostly shooting whenever we see any specialist units. The next ability modifier is completely up to you. You can take Hail of Fire which will proc 30% running to all of your ranged attacks whenever you activate your ability. Or, you can take Light em Up if you want to focus more on Horde Clearing instead. Personally though, I'd recommend Hail of Fire since you can proc rending for the whole team, meaning lots of armored enemies will take more damage from everyone. In testing, I liked Light em Up for the monstrosities, but with how often I ran into Carapist armored enemies, I felt like it was much better to take Hail of Fire instead. Besides, you can actually have another choice of what you'd like to take for your blitz. Since I enjoy watching a nuke go off every so often, I opted in for the big frag bomb. But you can also take bombs away since they both share a node. For my aura, since lots of people are playing veteran now, I went with Coward Culling, which helps everyone using ranged option. With this aura, we all do 20% more damage to suppressed enemies whenever my allies are in coherency. Everyone has some form of suppression, so this makes damnation a lot easier to progress with your team since you'll be mainly shooting during every encounter. For my keystone, I went with Burst Limiter Override. This gives me a 5% chance of triggering Lucky Bullet and not consuming ammo whenever I shoot. Now, I know this is a 1 in 20 chance of it actually going off, which is actually really rare. However, it's not the keystone I was most interested in. The keystone modifiers are extremely good for running this build, and they all give you different options whenever the moment arises. With good shooting, whenever Lucky Bullet procs, it's a guaranteed critical shot as long as the bullet connects to the enemy that you're shooting. Maximum firepower is amazing because we can use our ability and immediately recycle all of those shots towards our next use of point blank barrage. Whenever Lucky Bullet triggers, our ability cooldown reduction goes up to a plus 200% for 2 seconds. And to make sure Lucky Bullet triggers more often, we can up our chances by using more burst limiter overrides. This should be bumped to 10% instead of the 8%, but I love how often Lucky Bullet procs with this, making sitting off cooldown much more manageable. Now, let's talk about some passives. 
I wanted to enhance the dock ability even further by focusing our path towards increasing our stubber's capabilities. With ammo stash, we can increase our already sizable amount of ammo by 25%. Heavyweight is almost a staple in most, if not all of my Ogren builds that face damnation threats head on. You want the damage reduction and the damage increase for this build, as it will make killing elites much easier. Lynchpin keeps your toughness regenerating quickly and more efficiently whenever we're fighting with our team. Massacre is also a great passive that helps proc our crit chance whenever we kill an enemy. This comes in handy whenever we're starting to mow down the horde, and the best part is, this works well with Haymaker on our club. And building up stacks is even easier with the stubber. Capitalizing on our damage output is this passive will consistently be proc'd as we're cycling between targets. Since we're using a brace stubber, I felt that using mobile and placement would be a great choice to help reduce damage whenever we're stuck fighting in massive horde encounters. This, mixed with Bold Bravado, will actually keep your damage intake low, but it will also consistently keep your toughness from going down with the regen we receive. Reloaded and Ready gives us more range damage, and every time we activate our main ability after needing a reload, this will activate. I found that with the Blessing Charmed Reload, you can actually recycle your rounds into your mag, but I felt that it was inconsistent, and I found myself reloading often anyway. This just pushes our damage to great numbers, especially when a boss unexpectedly shows up. Smash him allows us to replenish more toughness whenever we're hitting a single enemy. This is most used with our club for when we need to engage in close quarter combat. Soften them up is another great passive that spreads for the whole team's use. With this passive, anyone we damage will take 15% more damage. Hitting as many enemies as we can will help our team tremendously here. Steady Grip gives us a chance to brace up and unload whenever we're in coherency with our entire team. The toughest replenishment is still really nice, even at a measly 2%, it still has a great use for the team composition. If we ever need to clutch and we're taking a lot of hits, too stubborn to die will keep us going for the 100% toughness replenishment while below 25% health. This is why we wanted more toughness over max health curios. The overall lower percentage of health can actually proc this a little bit earlier and keep us fighting for longer despite the health loss. Towering Presence just pushes our coherency aura radius a little bit further, granting our teammates more of our passive buffs even when distant. And lastly, Unstoppable Movement grants us 20% movement speed for 2 seconds whenever we make a ranged kill. This will proc almost always since we're going to be using our gun for most of the time. You should always be able to keep up with your team no matter what thanks to this passive. And as for my operative modifiers, they consist of boost to melee, range damage, reload speed, suppression, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. All of which I felt were being utilized well in this build. With this build, you want to play rear of the team looking out for elites and specialists ahead and behind. Although you'll feel like an anchor sometimes, your power is unrivaled, and your team should constantly keep an eye on you for damage and preservation of power. My favorite team composition for this build was a bubble psyker mixed with two vets running survivalists for ammo regen. This build is most useful with a good team of people working through every problem together. Just keep in mind that you can dominate in small teams too. Again, since you're a powerhouse that manipulates enemy damage rates and rending, you created a nice synergy for the whole team. Just stay in coherency, protect everyone, and purge all the heretics. I just wanted to say thanks for all the constant support on these build videos. I really enjoy making these videos for everyone, and most of all, I enjoy helping out whenever I can. I'm just somebody who enjoys having fun, and I try not to take everything so seriously. The overall positivity has made it much easier for me to keep content like this going. And also, thank you for the constant feedback and suggestions in the comment section too. We're nearing a thousand subscribers soon, so expect a little thank you video coming soon. But anyways, I'm gonna go start working on my next build, but in case you forgot, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the rest of the match.
getting away. It's getting ready to explode. cover.
It's whispering of the cicatrix benedictum. It never explains. Like, what is it? You should be more concerned with what is waiting for you up ahead. Stay on the mission. Enough for your company. Go there.
Stack 